Hey Skyfarers, Arkham Admiral here. Uh, just want to do a quick uh, short video about these guys. Go and stop thunderers. Uh, reason I want to do the video is uh, for a couple of reasons really is there's a lot of discussion about what weapons these guys should have. Um, so uh, basically you've got a couple of different options uh, when building these guys up. Um, you can either take all rifles or you can sprinkle in uh, a couple of fume gators or you can go sort of the, the whole hog and um, and uh, mix in all the special weapons such as the Aper Cannon, the Deck Sweeper and the Mortar. Um, and to be honest, I haven't really decided what is the best option to go for. Um, so I decided to go down the route of magnetizing them. Um, something I recommend for other people as well because ultimately in the long run it's going to give you a lot of flexibility. Um, um, yeah, it's going to give you a lot of uh, flexibility, and uh, you're going to sort of, like you're going to be prepared if there's any change in the future, um, and you don't have to spend a huge amount of money on you know buying multiple kits just so you can run the different we weapon options. Um, hi, Ma oh, I just seen that Max is in the chat. They make Thunderers great again. Hi, Max. Uh, um, so. First of all, let's sort of look at the reasons of why. Um, if you're not familiar with the War Scroll, then basically in a unit of five funders, they can either have all rifles or uh, the leader of the unit has a rifle that does basically double the number of shots, does four shots rather than two. Um, and then one in every five can be can have a deck sweeper. Another one in the five can have a Aper Cannon. Another one in the five can have a Mortar. And then another one in the five can have a Fumigator. Um, so essentially, you're, you've got a lot of different choice there. Um, the, the main uh, things to consider are sort of the damage output of the weapons, plus also the range. So most of those guns have a 12 inch range with the exception of the rifle which has an 18 inch range and the fumigator which has a 9 inch range um, obviously the key thing to consider there with the fumigator is if your funders are in a ship and you fly high to 9 inches away then you have to be technically more than 9 inches away so the fumigator won't get to shoot um, and obviously uh, with a 12 inch range uh, most of those weapons aren't going to be shooting beyond a screen really uh, but the rifles will give you a, a, a lot more range there to sort of get behind a screen to shoot a hero or something but will do in theory less damage um, now speaking of damage uh, I'm not going to read out all the stats from the war scroll because you can go read them if you want to but what I will talk about is how the average damage output because I think that's useful to know so Without any buffs at all, a rifle averages 0.444 recurring damage against a 4 plus thing. Um, a fumigator averages 0.888. A deck sweeper averages 0.666. A cannon averages 0.694. And a mortar is 0.333 recurring. Um, so what you can tell from that is generally the mortars are rubbish, which I think most people agree on. There's no real discussion on that. Um, the the rifle is, a, is probably is that basically the, the second weakest weapon in terms of damage output. But it's important to note that it does have the 18 inch range. Um, the tech sweeper is okay. Um, and then the cannon is the best, really, except for the fumigator, which the fumigator is actually really good. Um, averages a very high damage output. Um, it's not too swingy because the fumigator can be a, a not. The cannon can be a little bit swingy. Um, 
you know, hit on a four, and then D3 damage, you know, it could you know, you roll a one, roll a six, I don't know. Um, Fumigate is, you can't, it can't necessarily go so wrong so much on one roll, but the, the main problem with that is it's nine inch range. Um, and then the other factors to consider are that the mortar, the deck sweeper, and the cannon can all get plus one to hit um, from an ability on their wall scroll uh, called pin them, tread them, finish them. Um, so basically, those weapons can get plus one to hit if you have at least one of each of those weapons in the unit at the time. So what that means is, um, unfortunately, if you want to get the plus one to hit buff, you need to have a mortar as a tax, effectively. Um, but to give you an idea of how that affects the average damage output, a deck sweeper goes from its normal 0.666 damage up to uh, 0.888 damage, same as the fumigator. The cannon goes up to 0.92 damage, and the mortar goes up to uh, 0.444 damage, so it basically becomes as, as potent as a rifle, but again, still has the lower range. Um, so as you can see, once, once you get that buff, um, the cannon actually becomes twice as powerful as a rifle, and so does the deck sweeper, which is basically, when you're the same, same points for the unit, quite, quite a significant difference really. Um, and if you're having a large unit, you know, if all of it, several of your guys are doing twice as much damage as they normally would, then that's quite good. Um, the, the other consideration is that that buff can't be gotten while the unit is inside the ship. So if you're going to take the, uh, the special weapons, you need to be, to, to get the effectiveness out of them, you need to be outside the ship. Um, which at some point in the game you're going to want to do anyway, because you're going to need to take objectives, but you know, arguably that you know, that could be turn three, four, or five, as opposed to turn one or two. So, though it might be more effective um, in later turns, it's not necessarily going to be more effective in other turns, and the range is going to be an issue when they are in the ship, potentially. Um, the other thing is that Grand Zuck's Thunderers have another ability where they can get plus one attack to missile weapons while they are within three inches of an enemy unit. Which again does not apply if they are um, in a garrison. So um, what that sort of means is that um, basically because it's plus one attack as opposed to sort of double the number of attacks, but it tends to buff the elite weapons more than it buffs the the weapons with a, a larger number of shots. For instance, the deck sweeper is four shots um, that are all each not each shot isn't very powerful, but because there's four of them, that adds up to quite a bit. Whereas the cannon is only one shot, but it's very powerful. Um, so the cannon gets a bigger buff from from that than say the deck sweeper. Um, so to give you an idea, so actually give you the figures um, here. So a rifle um, with a plus one attack goes up to 0.666 recurring average damage against four plus save. Fumigator goes up to 1.184. Um, the deck sweeper goes up to 0.833, and the cannon goes up to 1.388. Um, and then the mortar is still pretty rubbish. Um, it's not 0.666 uh, again, so the same damage as a rifle, but um, with less range. Although it's important to note that when you're getting that plus one attack, um, you're within three inches of an enemy unit anyway. You can only shoot that unit, so the range it doesn't matter. Um, at least in that one particular scenario, anyway. Um, and then if you put these buffs together, the plus one hit and the plus one attack, the rifle is basically the same as when it has plus one attack because it doesn't get the plus one to hit buff. 
so it's still 0.666 damage on average. The Fumigator is 1.184 damage on average, because again, it doesn't get plus one to two. And the Dex Reaper is uh, 1.11 damage, and the Cannon is 1.84 damage, um, and the Mortar is 0.88 damage. So uh, that's pretty much the only time, really, when the Mortar ends up being better than the rifle, but it's still pretty bad. Um, so essentially, if all you care about is firepower, then really the better option is to go with special weapons. Um, but from a practicality point of view, you to make the most of them, you want to have rifles to get the range. Now, the other thing to note is that if you do go to the special weapons, it's not like you don't have any rifles. So, for instance, in a unit of 10, if you have two cannons, two deck sweepers, one mortar, and then you, it's up to you whether you want to have fume engages or not, because they're, they're a different thing. I'll talk about those in a second. But essentially, if you say if you have one fume gator, then you've got track of what I said there, one, two, four, six special weapons, which means you've still got four rifles, one of which is the leader of the unit with the extra attacks as well. So you still got uh, you still got ten rifle attacks. So you still got ten eight inch attacks. So it's, it's not like if you go with the special weapons you lose any 18 inch threat range damage at all. Um, the other considerations are your unit size. Uh, for instance, if you go with a five man unit, it's, you might, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference really what weapons you have because you know it's only five guys. You know, you're talking about the difference in total of you know an extra 0.5 to one damage or something. Um, because the extra damage you get from having a cannon or a deck sweeper or a fumigator is offset by the mortar being worse and the range and stuff. So I wouldn't really bother going, wouldn't worry about it too much actually with a five man unit. Once you get a 10 man unit above is when you really want to consider it. But obviously, when you build your first five models, you probably want to consider that you, you know, when you go up to 10 units of 10 or you buy your next five to go up to 15 or 20 or something, then you don't want to be stuck going, well, I've built them all with rifles now, so, or I've built them all with special weapons now, so I've got to carry on with that, which is where magnetizing is really handy because you've got choices. Um, oh, I'm just going to chat. Uh, Max says, basically, the thunder is the best thing behind the screen of Arkham, so they're within three inches. Yeah, uh, potentially. I mean, the difficulty of that is whether you can get your Arkhamots to where you need them to be and the funders because of the capacity of the ships. Um, so it's you've got to make some decisions based on how you're going to use your funders in a game. Do you Are they going to be deployed on the table outside of the ship, say, and then just sort of push forwards? In which case, you know, you can make an argument for both cases because the 18 inch range ones are going to be effective for more of the game. Um, but the fact they're out of the ship means they can get the buff and special weapons. Um, for instance, if you're playing Zilfin, then in theory, if you, if you fly high or move in the hero phase, then you can then drop them out the, um, in the first movement phase in the center of the board somewhere. Um, the other thing uh, that you need to consider is whether you want to go for, for be aggressive with the way you're using or more defensive and this is where the fumigator comes in because the fumigator has an ability where it um, minus is one from the hit rolls of enemy models within three inches of it so it, it doesn't specifically say melee but it is within three inches, so your unit has to be in melee for it to take effect. But essentially, it's mostly only going to affect 
uh, enemy melee units, but say if you get charged by or charge a unit that shoots, then it will affect their shooting attacks. The important thing to note about this is it stacks with the chemist. The chemist has a similar ability for minus one to hit. So you yeah, so you can get enemy models up to minus two to hit and just with one fumigator and say a unit of ten thunderers and a chemist, you can get them all within range of the chemist debuff and all within range of the fumigator debuff. So any model sort of within one inch range of them will be minus two to hit, uh, which is quite significant. Um, and if you say went up to two fumigators, you sort of you add some um, you 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 you'd cover the area easy. You'd get a bit more scope to spread them out. Or, you know, if you've got enemy models that got two inch range, you'd be able to get some of those in range as well. But the important thing is that two fumigators don't stack against each other, they only stack against the chemists, so, and two chemists uh, debuffs don't stack against each other, so you're not going to get things to minus three or minus four to hit with those abilities, unless you, you brought in a third or fourth ability that's just terminates. Um, so, essentially, there's a lot of different ways to play with Fundras, because if you want to, you can go all rifles. If you want to, you can go, say, with a unit 10, all rifles, but put two fumigators or one fumigator in. So they're a little a little bit more defensive when they're on the table. Um, the other option is to, to load up on the special weapons um, and not have fumigators, or you can load up on the special weapons and include fumigators to try and get that um, minus that, that debuff on enemy units. So you've got so many choices there that it's it's almost baffling to make a decision when you're building them for what you want to do because you know you might have a list idea and go, right, yeah, it's gonna go all rifles because I want the range, but then you find out that actually in most of your games you end up putting them they end up within twelve inches or something, or they end up being out of the ship a lot. So you know, you don't want to then go out and buy another 10 or 15 funders because it's expensive. So, uh, yeah, that's why magnetizing is a good option. So, we talk about why, talk about how. So, um, let's get this guy, this guy, let's not show him first. There's a couple of different methods. Let's show this guy first. So, uh, let me get to the light. Focus. So this guy, he's got a rifle, and this is the first method I used for magnetizing them. So basically, on this guy, I have put magnets in two places. I put magnets in here, in where the arm joins the shoulder, and I've also put magnets here. Turn that around. Do you want to? Oh, I focus it here. These I put magnets in here. Now you can see those magnets. So I've moved away from doing this method because essentially, first of all, you can see the magnets, um, which is not great, and it uses more magnets than the other method because I've got two magnets there, two magnets there, and yeah, it works. So it's quite satisfying. I quite like that. Um, uh, nice too, um, but yeah, you don't actually want to see your magnets, and if you can get away with using less, why not? Because they cost money. Um, the other thing is, for ease of doing it, is I've cut off the pipes because getting them to join up is a bit of a pain, um, especially on some of the models. Like some some of them aren't so bad as others because, say, the pipe is attached to the gun and it goes from here. To here and then to stop, and it would glue here. But there are a couple where you've got a bit of pipe here and a bit of pipe here, and then a join. Though the pipe would join in the middle, which is very difficult to line up. Um, and even if you can get to line up, you will probably see the join 
when you're looking at the model because it's not going to be glued and you're not going to have like a nice layer of paint over it covering the drawing. So yeah, that's um, one, one method um, to show the mortar. The mortar, yeah. Yeah. So you can see how actually, on, that's, because this is one of the first ones I did, how actually those magnets, I think you're going to see that, can you? Don't necessarily line up perfectly well there. Um, it's probably basically when I was dry fitting it didn't go so well. And then on the back here, let's hope you can see it. No, it's not really showing, but it's not really showing because it's dark. But there's a little bit of a gap there. I can actually get this plastic in there. I mean, it's not that noticeable. Like when you sit on the table, you're not going to notice that, but if you're looking up close and you've done a really nice paint job like to have a gap there would be a little bit annoying. Um, so that's one method. I've got another model, so to show on another one. Um, using the same method again. You can see the magnets. Uh, take that off. Put the deck sweeper on. There you go. You can see the magnets still. Um, oh, not drawn up there. Okay. There. It has, yeah, you can actually, that's a good example that shows that really the magnets here are strong enough to um, to hold it, but the second one just helps position it really. Um, but again, if I get that on, you can see the magnets. So that's the first method. Um, the second method, um, credit for that goes to a guy called. Uh, uh, Giuseppe, who's in the WhatsApp chat, um, he suggested it to me. Um, and basically, with the, that method, you you leave this part here intact because the way you do the upper method is you have to cut this bit off um, and then glue a magnet there. So it's a, the other method is a bit more work as well. With, it, with the method he suggested, if you leave that on, and only put a magnet in here, then what you can do is you can have this as a push fit on here. So I'll tell if I can show you well. I've still got the hole in there and it looks just pushes in. It's a bit awkward because I'm uh, trying to show it on camera. There we go. It doesn't snap into place quite so easily. At least not when you're trying to not look at what you're doing and show it on the uh, on the camera. Um, but um, yeah, that's so that method uses half as many magnets, um, particularly on the rifles. Oh well, that's not good. I've actually just broken the base, which is really not good. But you can see um, how when it goes in there. Yeah, it's the focus. Yeah, it, it just looks a bit better. Obviously, you need better to film the basis, so that's really not a good example, is it? Um, so let's show the same method, the fumigator. And I already want to talk about the fumigator because the fumigator is the most awkward one because the way it joins is a bit different. So with the fumigate, you have an extra section of arm that you would normally glue first here and then on here and then on there afterwards. Um, but you only get one bit of arm, so to make it work, it has to be glued to the model. Um, but it's not a very easy place to put the magnet in. Um, so basically, the, the method I prefer now is if you if you put the magnets in here and you leave this side push fit, it works quite well. Um, uh, a few other things to consider is because you've also got options with the uh, the standard and the captain of the unit because the captain of the unit has a slightly different gun, um, so he has his double shot rifle, which is bigger. Um, 
you don't necessarily have to put the drill bill on him, but it kind of makes sense to. And you don't necessarily have to put the standard on him, but again, it kind of makes sense to. Now, you can try and magnetize those if you want to. I haven't actually bothered because you can, or you can or you can just leave them off as well if you want to, but I've just put them on. But what I've done is for instance, this guy's gonna actually set up as a leader, but um it's good. The, and, and the sanders doesn't matter matters much anyway, but um because you can have one in five can have a sanded anyway, but you only get one drill bill for the whole unit and obviously only one leader for the whole unit. Um for a better example is these models are both built as captains, I think is the actual proper term for them. But because I've given one a special base, if I do run them as a combined unit, then it's quite easy for my opponent to go up right, the leader of the unit and the drill build that matters is the, the one with the gold base. And then if I want to use them as two separate units, I still got a, a leader unit, a leader model, sorry. Um, so they're, they're sort of the, the basic methods. Um, so the other things to consider is how you're actually going to do it. Max actually asked that in the chat. Um, so you need magnets. So these are the magnets I buy. Uh, they're, so they're three millimeter by 0.5 millimeter in 42s, um, and as you can see, they're they're more than strong enough to uh, to hold it in place. Um, and let's get these out so you can actually see them. Okay, because they are small on the roll. So there you go. They're the magnets. They are. Like this is the tip of a you know games workshop watch me call it plastic texture spring applying thing. So it's quite small. Um they really are on on my finger quite thin. Um uh, which is handy because that means that if you're gonna counter sync them or something, you don't have to drill in too far. And the reason I've got these magnets is because originally when I first started magnetizing, I was doing things like uh, engine riggers. Um, so I was just, you know, changing the tips of their guns. And so actually the magnets are quite visible, uh, not too bad on them because, you know, it's around tip of gun and around um, grapnel or drill cannon pit or something. And so yeah, um, I wanted not nice thin ones for that. And you know, you don't want to keep buying lots of different magnets for different things. You can get smaller than this, but I already find these relatively fiddly to use. So going smaller is not going to be that uh, much of a, a help. Um, and as as you can see, as you can see in there, it fits anyway, and you know these guys are relatively small, uh, so there's not really much reason to be small. If I was carrying on using the upper method, then the smaller magnets would be better. But with this method, it's not so bad. Uh, another thing to note is actually as well, get it to catch the light. You can see actually the magnets because you you get a lot of sort of uh, abrasion. With when you take the models on and off, like uh, the paint can chip, and you can see how the paint is chipped in there. Now, when the guns are on, it's not visible really. So a little bit visible in there, and I can touch that up. Probably, and I haven't put any um, varnish or. You know anything to protect these models because I only finished them the other day, so hopefully that won't cause many issues in the future. But really, it doesn't help that I played with them a lot and um, you know keep taking the guns on and off. You know, the less you do that, the less I do are to get a chip. Um, so let's talk about how you actually do it and some of the other things you use. So I showed you the magnets. It's the other thing I use. So this is basically um, an electric screwdriver. It's not a drill, it's a screwdriver. Um, 
you can use a drill or you can get little hobby drills or something as well. And then I have a variety of different uh, versions of these, which are basically, they have the drill bits, but they have the hexagon um, shape bit. That means it can go into the screwdriver. And the reason I used, bought this and that was basically for safety because, you know, it, when, it, when it's on and it spins, it doesn't go for anywhere near as fast or as powerful as a, as a drill. So if I was to get my hands, I, I can do that. And it's not, you know, it's not going to do me any harm. So because you're, you're working with small models and things, and you don't want to run the issue if you slip and destroy your whole model or you, you know, drill a hole into your hand. So that's the reason that I use that. Um, so let me just show you, okay, the basic method of, how you do this. So this is a model that I've run a concept funder obviously that I've built partially. The back I have um only blue tacked on because that helps position things. Um and I leave I don't glue those on now because I find that getting your paintbrush in there to paint things is the right pain. So I leave it off and then you can sort of paint the straps in that a lot easier. Um, but yeah, so I leave that, I don't glue that on for painting, or if you want to do that, but for the case of magnetizing, basically you want it on because then you can see like how this lines up, the pipe lines up to there. It's basically lets you line things up properly to make sure that you have the gun in the right place. And you can see that off because it's not magnetized. You can see there, like what I was talking about, how it, it lines up quite well. And that's just knocked out of my hand. Excuse me. Yeah, so it lines up relatively well there, but it's still not perfect. So that's why I cut the pipes off. And like I said, some of them, you're going to have to cut them off anyway. If you want to move them on, it's up to you. Um, and then what I do, because I normally cut them off, is you can see this bit here is like a, I say you can see, but let's turn it around so you can see. Well, it's hard to see, but this bit here, it has little rivets on it because it's meant to be where the pipe joins. And what I've done with most of my newer guys is I basically smoothed that over um, and made it like a nice glowy bit rather than like a thing, like a riveted thing that holds something that isn't there. And the same with the guns. Um, so this guy, yeah, this guy is pretty much ready to go in terms of being magnetized. Um, and I'm going to do that in a minute. But actually, before I do that, I want to show you how I got to that stage um, with this guy. Um, because on, on the one I just showed you, I've already glued the left arm in place, which isn't on this one. Now, and, and again, here's where you can see this one is one of the ones where the, the pipes, you've got two bits of pipe and they join. And you can, I've got that to line up relatively well there, but that's never going to be invisible, which is why I cut them off. So in order to magnetize him, you need to glue his arm on here. And then that will help a lot with um, when you do the drilling and stuff in a minute. But so to glue him on, to get this arm in the right place, like because you could glue that arm like, like that if you wanted to. Um, uh, so how I'm holding it, like that's obviously not going to work, is it? It's obvious, but even if you're going to try and like, you don't want to glue it down like that, and you don't want to glue it sort of up in the air like that. You can't get it in the right place. So what I've done is I've glue tacked the uh, right arm in place. I've also got some more blue tack right in there as well. But try to minimise how much blue tack I put in there as little as possible, just enough to hold it. And then shove some more on here afterwards just to really 
hold it in place securely because if you put too much in here, then it pushes the arm out away from the shoulder. Um, so, but basically by putting that arm in place, it then means that you can glue this bit in place. I'm actually going to do it now. Um, well, it means I can put it in place and it will be in the right place. So, Ooh. I'm trying to work out whether I'm actually in camera. Put it in. And then just to adjust to make sure that the arm is in the right place. Um, hold that so it sets enough to. So. Okay, I'll put that in there for now because that's really just to show you how I get to this stage. Is what I've done earlier, um, where the arm is already in place, um, which means that for the push fitting, you know, it kind of works. And actually, if you didn't want to magnetize, that almost kind of works. But as you can see, if like, if you move two models next to each other and piling in and stuff and you went oh like that it's going to come off easily isn't it so that's why you kind of want the magnets to help hold things in place uh, lid on my glue before going further because i want to leave that off so the next thing is i need to put a magnet in here and i need to put a magnet in here um now this isn't too difficult you literally get a drill bit and hold it nice and securely and what i do is i start with the smallest drill bit i have which is a 1.5 because if you start big it doesn't work very well um so i'm just gonna put that in place and drill in the center switch to the next size up drill bit actually what we can see is I went off center a little bit so this is why you start with a small one because then you can sort of go push the other one a little bit mm. awkward trying to actually do this on the camera So I've now gone up to a three millimeter drill bit. Now my magnets, if you remember, are three millimeters. So in theory, it will fit in there fine. But actually, I'm going to go up to 3.5 mil because that gives a little bit of a uh, little bit of extra space for the magnet to fit in. And then you've got when you put your super glue in. Hold it this is the trouble as well. It's why I use the, the screwdriver bit because it's just a lot safer. So I've now got a hole in there. I've got a little bit of, um, uh, what do you want to call it? A little bit of crap basically from the, uh, from the drill bit. So now that's ready to take a magnet. Uh, now what I always do is actually before I glue any magnets, I always do this one first because if you do that one first then it's just easier to do the shoulder first because you've got to do you've got to match up both guns to the shoulder so if you because if you glue your magnets in the opposite way around you have a hell of a mess so i'm going to repeat the process switch to my smallest drill bit um and this one's a little bit more awkward because you've got a big flat surface here and if i just try and drill particularly with the big drill bit in here, it could slide around all over the place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just 
Life is a back shop. Try and mark just a little dip it. Just that helps the uh, drill bit. Contact on very well. Crushing down a bit. I wouldn't actually normally probably have this blue tack to here, but this is more to try and help show what I'm doing without you know covering up everything. A bit off now, I don't need it on there anymore. This is the, the worst thing, it's just getting started. So once you started, you're fine. You really want to make sure it's in the centre. And you see, like, because this is only a screwdriver, you know, I'm pushing relatively hard on it. It's not like, really hard, but and I've got it on full power, but it's not going very far, which is kind of why it's the safest way of doing it. But it does mean it takes like a few seconds that's longer, but. Mm, building up this hole now. Okay, let's get it off now. Don't know your motor. That's 2.0, so. Probably don't see me to use the 2.5 one, it's more just so that I start small and get the hole in the right place. This bits off a hole in there, and that's just enough to countersink the. Uh, I'm just going to stick them back on here so I can hold them without you know covering up everything I'm trying to show you. And now I've got a hole in there, a hole in there, and if I push it in, you know you can't really see the holes. All right, so. Next thing is obviously magnets. And this is a bit awkward, I can't put my fingernails on as well, which actually makes it even more difficult. Um, super glue, it's just cheaper super glue I could find, really. It has a nice small application thing. You just need to be careful here that you don't get super glue everywhere. Like I normally hold it upright and just wait until I get that. Tiny little bubble, and just, just get enough in there because if you get loads, then it'll come out. And then the magnet, try not to drop it, dry somewhere. These magnets are this is the thing if you go smaller magnets, it's well, a knife, I think. Like you kind of need to drop it in place. Or... I'm struggling now. <laughs> uh, the pressure of doing things live. Okay. Glue my finger, haven't I? Which is stupid. Stupid, stupid me. Yeah. This is the fiddly bit, this is the bit where I always have these right. Now once you drop it in, if you can do that first time, like just drop it in, it's that's it's fine. It's just if you don't and you can you can this sort of push it into place a bit better. Turn it goes into the hole. Which is pushed in. Now, I didn't make that look as easy as it can be because sometimes it can be 
a lot easier than that. And sometimes it can be a lot worse. Um, just depends on if you manage to drop it into your hole first time. Now, the next thing you need to do is find your one of magnets. Where did I put them? Oh, I've lost my magnets. What have I done with them? It means a whole tube of magnets. Oh dear, they're on here somewhere. The trouble is, they stick to things because they're magnetic. They need to be very careful with them. They're probably right, right in front of me and I can't see them. So, oh, there they are. Look, they stuck there. They stick to things all the time. In some ways, it stops them falling on the floor, but probably a good idea to. I'm going to get my next one to put on there for now. When you're not even going to just put them back in your thing. Just to stop them going anywhere. Because you do need to be careful them. Because they are actually quite powerful magnets as well. So if I got that tube of them next to my phone, it'd probably do some sort of god knows what sort of damage to it. Um so this magnet here, which you can't see, we're going to camera shot. I need to glue it into here. I need to make sure I get it the right way around. So I'm just going to put that magnet on there. And that means I know that the side facing out is the side that's got to go in this hole. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself some glue. Kind of glue in there. And then you have to do like a sort of swap because you need to get it off so the side that is touching my skin now is the side that was pointing outwards so that is the side that's actually got to be glued in so i need to kind of swap it around so now i have the side that was pointing outwards before is now pointing outwards again and that's got to go in there that one went a lot better than the last one. I'm just going to push it into the hole. I always use my plastic things for that because it will just stick to the knife. And then once you've got it in there, just leave it dry and make sure it is definitely dry before you try and put these together because, as I said, the magnets are quite powerful. If your glue hasn't finished drying, then it will come off. It will stick to the other magnet that probably has set in place. And then you're going to be like, oh, I need to get it off there, and you're going to try and touch it when it's going to have wet glue on it, and it's going to be a right problem. Um, so there we go. And then I need to do the other gun. I might as well do that now. I think I'm using the smaller drill bit because there's already a hole in there. So that's about to say 2.5. Three. And the three point five, so it's just like a little gap for the glue and stuff. Churning on there, but I just need to come off. So you see, this is quite a bit, and basically, didn't really get it centered that well in there. So I'll come to the edge there. So you need to, this is why. When I've done the one before, I really made sure I'm tickled on the arm was to make sure I've got in the center of where I wanted to drill because if not, you can, if you get too close to the edge, then your drill bit will just churn it up. Um, so it can put glue in there.
Again, get one out, sleep, get it out onto your workshop. Put your world away so you don't lose them like you did a minute ago. And then get it on your fingertip. Yeah, and that means you can get it on there. You know you've got your magnet the right way, which way round the magnet is. And slide it off. So at the moment, the bit that needs to glue in is on my finger. So I'm going to Swap it around. So now the bit that needs to glue is on facing up. And I can drop it in and then just push it in. There we go. And then leave that one to try. And that's basically how you do it and then you paint them up um, and I paint over the magnet bits I will have to clean that little bit up a bit later I'll probably just chop some green stuff on there um, and normally I wouldn't actually get that problem because I would you know just take my time on it a bit more um, yeah so that's basically how you do it you count the sink holes Glue your magnets in, leave these bits as push fit, um, and that's it. This one, yeah, this is dry now, so you can see the one I did a minute ago. Oh, the magnet is enough to hold it in place, and the push fit bit is just enough, it's just, you know, to help locate it. And then, in theory, I'll put the back 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 on that come off a minute ago. It's sort of lines up there, but you can see. And then to bring you like, if I was going to leave the pipe on because I haven't glued this on, I could position it so it fits better against the pipe. But I think it's always going to be relatively visible. So and because you have the ones. Uh, so what I showed a little while ago, like this one where you can see that gap. That's why I cut them off. Um, because it doesn't matter how well you do that, you're always gonna see it. Um so kind of I just done seeing here like it's a little bit rough. Now I'm not actually putting that in camera shot, am I? Um like the glue obviously hasn't filled the hole completely the magnet doesn't fill the hole completely because you you sort of go half a mil up size so i don't really worry about that um it's an extra stage and if you want to do it what you could do is just get some green stuff and just push that in there and then file that down or just try and fill in these little gaps if you if you want it to be completely smooth but ultimately whenever you're going to see the model you're not going to see that bit anyway, so you know it's not a big a deal. So, like, you can't see in there anyway. But if you really were going to be perfectionist about it, then you do that. You know, it's it comes down to how much work you want to do. Like, I've got a little bit of a gap in that shoulder blade there where I haven't glued that very well, which that and will annoy me more than the bit on there. So I'm going to sort that out, but. Yeah, that's how you do it. So, uh, if you've got any questions or, or not, then uh, let me know in the chat. But yeah, if you're sitting there trying to figure out how to build your funders and you've never done magnetizing before, that's how you do it. And I'm I'm by no means of an expert or anything on it. This sort of self-taught. So, if you're watching this and you're thinking, oh no, I've better ways of doing that, then I'd like to know. Um, but yeah, that's it. So, thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you again soon.